Uh, hey guys, so it is, uh, I don't know what it is. It's Tuesday today. I do know, in fact, it's a Tuesday in February. I do believe it's February 23rd. As I've said before, as a self-employed content creator, things like dates don't really matter too much. Days barely matter. The only reason I really remember days is simply because, uh, because the wife, <laughs> the wife demands the weekends off. You will take the weekends off, boy! But anyways, I do believe it is February 23rd. Uh, if I seem a little tired right now, this is my second exercise of the day. The wife dragged me to the gym this morning. So uh, that was the first day of gym mornings. She uh, She's really found that she likes exercise a lot. Ever since all the cancer things and she started to have to eat healthier, uh, she started exercising more and more. And she actually really enjoys it. So she goes every morning at like 6 o'clock in the morning and works out for like half an hour or an hour. And she's been doing that for a couple of months now and really enjoys it. So now with me trying to slim down, she uh, convinced me to start going with her. So, uh, well... <laughs> like 5.50 in the morning, being in the cold car as she drives us to the gym. It is funny, like, sometimes, like, when you're married, where there is, like, this kind of, like, mommy feeling. Like, you just remember, like, being a kid when it was all cold and rainy and your mom drags you someplace. And, like, this morning, uh, my wife was all, like, happy and bouncy as we would drive to the gym at 5.50 in the morning. I'm just like, ah. Oh. But, you know, went to the gym, did my little little 35 minutes or so of working out. Didn't do a whole lot. Did a little bit of warm-up routine. Did some, did some strength training exercises. Uh, and, then, and then that was the first day. Um, I don't know what made me more sore uh, doing the exercises or simply being up that early in the morning. It's like I'm sitting there. Like, we were literally in the car uh, before I normally am drinking my first cup of coffee. <laughs> But hey, you know, if you're going to exercise, that's the whole thing with exercise or with anything with your goal is you got to start. It's one of those strange things people don't really seem to grasp is in order to get to where you're going, you got to start somewhere. You know, the journey of a thousand miles starts with the first step. So the good thing is being married, and we'll talk about this in the future, is one of the good things is having a partner that, that pushes you to do the things that you theoretically want to do but are kind of wimpy about. So the good part with this, like I say, is my wife is already in this routine. It's not like we start, and that's one thing to, to think, like with your spouse or with anybody else, is you don't necessarily want to start something with somebody else. So like if my wife hadn't been exercising and I hadn't been exercising, we wouldn't be the best partners. Right? Because you wake up in the morning and you're both kind of bitchy and crappy and want to get back in bed. And then you both agree to get back in bed. That doesn't really work out. So what you want is you want to find the partner that this is already a routine. This is already what they've been doing for months or years. And then they kind of force you to do it, right? So like with my wife, she's going to be going one way or the other because uh, she really enjoys it. And so since she wants me to be healthy, she's going to be like kicking my ass out of bed to go. That is the way to do it, right? So... So we went, that was the first day of exercise. Uh, I haven't actually filled out the paperwork for my personal trainer yet, so I'm going to uh, fill that out tonight and hand that in tomorrow, and then, I don't know, over the next couple of weeks, get a personal trainer. And uh, we'll see how we can go. We can buff this thing up. Eli, the computer guy, get your old buff. We can hope. <laughs> I did do the, uh, the weigh-in this morning. I am happy. I am down to like 203 something for the weigh-in. That was nice. So when I started this, I was 207.2. But I do have to say, this is not like some miracle thing or even a lot of water weight. Honestly, the reason I lost that weight is when my grandmother died and we traveled to Ohio for the funeral. Basically, I ate like absolute crap for, uh, for a couple days. It's like there's one thing like eating bad and then there's eating an entire large, you know, chicken ranch bacon pizza. <laughs> and then waking up in the morning eating breakfast. And then having a foot long sandwich at lunch. I don't know why. I just ate a lot with I guess when people die you, you decide to eat a lot. But so, um I have law lost like four pounds in two days. Um but that isn't so much um really much of anything other than pooping out all the crap that I ate for, for two days previously. But it does make you feel good. It does like yay! I lost four pounds. Now, now I've got to get to the job of actually losing the real weight. That gets really hard. Because that's what's hard with weight loss. Is like I say, that first, like the first five pounds is like really easy. And you're like, wow, this is easy. 
Uh, and then there's five and a half pounds. You're like, this sucks. Uh, but anyways, so, so about 203 or whatever for the geek diet, which again, overall isn't bad. It isn't bad. And actually, it makes me feel a little better because that means, oh, even with not dieting, um, and really, even without really paying attention to my food intake and even doing, not doing a lot of exercising, if 203 really is about where my, my weight should be minus, you know, death eating, um, that's really not too bad. I mean, that's not too horrible. Again, the, the way I look at it for myself is again, I'm a big boned person. So 175 is about as skinny as I'll ever be. 175 is me, again, like I say, like adventuring weight, throw a pack, go into the, the great unknown. But that's a really good, like that's, that's when I'm down to like a 31 waist. I'm, I look good at 175. So basically like 175 is good. The way I look at it, like 190 area is where I am normally healthy. And then again, 200 is, eh, yeah, like I said, not necessarily where you want to be but it's not like danger area. I consider danger area for me like over 210. I don't know. I'm sure there's a lot of health people out there that would argue with that, but oh well. <laughs> the problem with the health people though is like I say, all this stuff is religion to people. Um, it's not really like a lot of people have a reason for what they believe. They just believe what they believe and then by God, they will die for their beliefs. You're just like, oh, come on, give me a break. <laughs> Anyways, so that's where we are the diet. But today what I want to talk about, the main topic, the main topic I want to talk about uh, was the idea of front-loading work as a uh, business person, especially as a tech business person, because this is an important way you can have a really cool life and make a lot of money and just be a really happy boy. Again, one of the things I wanted to, for you guys to understand uh, is that when I was younger um, and I was looking for mentors, um, I didn't just look for happy mentors and I didn't just look for wealthy mentors or financially successful mentors. I looked for happy financially successful mentors and then I went to talk with them. And it is important to understand that is different. So a wealthy person isn't necessarily happy, right? And a happy person uh, can't necessarily pay the bills. <laughs> and again, like I say, once you, once you start paying $600 a month in health insurance for your wife and then lay out another $30,000 in, uh, in uh, hospital payments over two years, you start to want a little money. <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm not saying money brings you happiness, but it does pay hospital bills very well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's really nice to not worry about mortgages. I'm just saying. But anyway, so I went out there and looked for mentors that were both happy and financially successful. And one of the things that I found that they did, and I've learned to do over the years, it's basically front load work. Um, so what this means is, right, you know, when you're normally an employee, uh, you, one of the things that you are paid for is to be at work on a schedule. Um, again, you're not really paid for work. You're not really paid for productivity. You're paid to be a cog in the machine. So the machine needs a cog to spin or run uh, from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or whatever it is. And that's, that's really what you get paid for. You get paid for sitting in your space. That's what it is. The thing is, when you're a business owner or you're a consultant, uh, you get paid uh, for the work that you accomplish, for the solutions that you provide. Uh, not so much. Uh, people like, when people pay me, whenever they pay me, they don't really care about the hours. Uh, they really don't. The only time hours comes up is when I get really stupid clients that I want to fire and they start quibbling about how much I get paid per hour. And again, as soon as anybody starts quibbling about what I get paid per hour, I walk out the door. <laughs> if you don't want to pay me that per hour, I completely respect you. Bye. <laughs> I'm not getting into this argument. <laughs> Is the solution worth the cost? Yes or no? Yes or no? What I do with the money ain't any of your business. Is the solution worth the cost? So anyways, um, so you get paid for solutions. And so this is one thing like a lot of consultants don't realize is that if you get paid for solutions, then you can have a really good life because what you can do is you can do things like front load work. Uh, so what I mean by front load work is so uh, like with my YouTube channels right now. Uh, so I have Eli, the computer guy in the main channel, Eli computer guy live. And then this, this channel. So Eli, the computer guy, uh, channel is the main channel that makes me money. Lots of money, lots of money. Great. Great. All the way around. Great. Um, but the weird thing that I found with the Eli, the computer guy channel is that there is diminishing returns. YouTube is a weird world, real weird world. Uh, but it does make a good example where the, sometimes the more work you do, 
you actually end up making less money. Um, I tell you guys this, in the, in the normal world where you run into this problem where people decide they're going to work 80 hours a week, and the problem is, is once you start working 80 hours a week, you start burning out, and especially as a technology professional, you get paid on how you think the decisions you make, and so if you start burning yourself out, you start making worse and worse decisions, and ironically, when you work 80 hours a week, you make far worse decisions than when you work 40 hours a week, and so sometimes when you work more, you burn yourself out, you start making far worse decisions, and then you actually start making less money, and and you start being, it starts being worse for your career uh, than if you had just worked a normal 40 hour shift. You're like, isn't this awesome? I'm going to work my ass off. I'm going to work myself to the bone. Uh, and then you end up screwing up your career because you end up being an asshole because you're tired and exhausted. You're not making very good decisions. The whole nine yards, right? Well, diminishing the returns is the same also in the YouTube world where there's this weird thing where the more content you create, for some reason, a lot of people think you're spamming. And again, I, I don't get what this is. Um, but like, I used to do a lot of content. I used to do like up to three videos per day on the channel. And then I'll get a lot of complaints where people said I was spamming them. <laughs> it's like, I am creating content. It goes up on my channel. How is that spam? It's good content. It's still up there. Like, why is this spam? And the problem is, is it's not about what I believe or think. It's about how people perceive it. And so the issue is in the YouTube world, if you put up a lot of content, um, one, People think it's spam, and so they do things like unsubscribe and get pissy. Uh, the other thing, too, is there's this weird algorithm uh, with how YouTube recommends videos. And so one of the ways that YouTube, uh, one of the components of the YouTube recommendation algorithm is how often do people click on your new videos once you've uploaded them. So if I put out one video a week, and you guys are like fiending for that video, I need my Eli, the computer guy, telling me about bandwidth throttling or whatever else. Mimo. Um, then, you really want to see the video. So I put up a new video. Lots of people click on that new video. And then that, that tells YouTube that you guys all want to see my new video. So basically, the value of my videos in the YouTube algorithm goes up. Here's a problem. If I start doing a lot of videos, um, like I used to, I do lots and lots and lots. I do three videos a day. Well, the thing is, if I do three videos a day, even if you're my most avid fan, you're probably not going to click on all three. If I'm lucky, you'll click on one. So now, instead of half my subscribers clicking on every video that comes out, because I only put out one video a week, now it's, you know, 5% of my subscribers click on a new video. Well, then that tells uh, YouTube's algorithm that you guys don't care as much about my videos, uh, and then they're actually recommended less. So oddly enough, and there's this whole thing, if you go to, uh, there's a channel called Game Theory. Very good channel, uh, especially if you like video games. I'm not huge into video games, but the guy's really smart and does some really good content. Um, and so one of his, his things is, is the YouTube game system, and he goes over all this. Um, and so, so what I found is it's best really to put out like one video per week on the main channel. I may go up to two, possibly three due to, subscribe, uh, due to sponsors. Sponsors, lots of sponsors like my content. I've been getting a lot of contacts for sponsors. So again, algorithms and all that. I may boost the amount of content on the main channel just because sponsors are willing to pay for the slots. But, but basically it'll be like one, maybe two per, per week. And then on Eli Computer Guy Live channel, uh, I do three per week. And then again, same type of deal. I found that, uh, you know, if I was doing five videos on Eli Computer Guy Live per day, I literally got more views doing one every other day on that one video every other day than I got on like the 10 videos combined, whatever. Uh, and then this channel, I'm just gonna do as many as I want because I don't really care. This doesn't pay me anything. Like literally, my, my monthly revenue for this channel was like six bucks. Woohoo, I can buy a Frappuccino. Yeah, anyways. So, deal with this whole idea of diminishing returns. And so, what I've decided to do, because my wife and I want to go to uh, the Everglades, so we're going to pack up the travel trailer and go to the Everglades in April, um, for the month of April. We're gonna, well, we're going to go to the Everglades, and then we're going to Key West, and maybe a couple of other things. Take a month. Um, so we want to do that, but I also want to be putting out content, right? So, so not putting out content is bad. If I don't put out content, then you guys think I'm leaving you or something, and you don't subscribe and all that. So what I've done is, like today, um, if I do... So I do three videos per week. Uh, this afternoon, on, for the Eli Computer Guy Live channel, I did six videos. And now I'm gonna schedule those. So those six videos will go out over the next two weeks. So tomorrow, 
I'll probably do another six videos. And so that will be for the two weeks after. And the important part there is that means for the Eli Computer Guy live channel, I literally have an entire month's worth of videos backlogged. They're all nice and scheduled and will go out um, as I see fit, right? That's a good thing. Um, and so basically what will happen is that as I keep going, I will create new videos like every week for Eli Computer Guy live, but I'll have that month backlog. And then what I'm going to do is for the main Eli Computer Guy channel is again, I'm basically going to backlog, you know, four videos at least. And so what that allows is as far as you guys are concerned in the outside world, I'm still putting out week uh, work on my normal schedule. I put out one to two videos on Eli the Computer Guy, three videos on Eli Computer Guy Live, and whatever I do on this. Well, the thing is, all that content is going out as I'm sitting on the beach in Key West. A winner, right? And so this is one of those things that I want you guys to be thinking about with work. Is that again, you don't have to work all the time, especially with consultants. There's this idea that you have to work, 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 work. But the reality is, is there's a lot of up and down time. Like no matter what you do. Again, back when I was a consultant and back when I had a computer repair shop, we, we, had, we, we just had cycles, right? So if you look at it, you know, somewhere between November to January, it just slowed down. Just slowed down. So one of the questions is, if you're a consultant and you know it's going to slow down, do you really want to work in that time period, right? During that time period, even if I worked 60 hours a week, even if I worked 60 hours a week, I wouldn't really get much accomplished simply because nobody wanted to hire me then. So one of the things I would say is if you know you're going to have these cycles, then simply take that time, basically take the time off. If you know you're going to have downtime, more or less, you know, for like two months, you're just not going to get any clients. It's just how the, how the business cycle goes. Then why not take your vacation then? Take a good vacation. Like I say, hop in the travel trailer, backpack through Europe. Basically, you know, you're going to take two months. You're not going to make any money anyway. So during that two months, you're going to go off and you're going to do really cool stuff. And then you're going to come back and then you're going to work 60 hour weeks, um, you know, basically to make up the money. You know, that was one of the things I did like when I traveled, uh, when I was still a consultant is basically what I would do is these projects, like projects come in. Um, and they'd be about week projects. And so week projects would be anywhere between ten to ten to twenty thousand dollars billable with eh, anywhere between five to ten thousand dollars profit five to well sometimes fifteen thousand dollars profit. right? So what you do is you get the project, you work your ass off for a week, and then you take the next three weeks basically off. <laughs> and you go do whatever you want to do. Again, when I went off to to Thailand and Southeast Asia, before I went, I spent like a month busting my ass. I worked like sixty hours a week before I left. A little, a little squirrel taking all that money like it's little nuts packing it away and then I spent well <laughs> that was supposed to be a four month trip you know a month or so into it I got beat half to death and so I had to come home but <clears throat> that's its own story but basically I could take that money I could go off have enough money to travel for four months um, and then it was all good and so this is just one of those things to be thinking about because again a lot of problems that I see with uh, people that become consultants or they start their own businesses, they still have the employee mindset. They still have that employee mindset. The employee mindset states, I work from eight to nine, you know, eight to five. I get paid for punch on a clock. And again, that's great for employees. And that's exactly how employees get paid. That's not how uh, business people get paid. Business people get paid by deploying solutions. And so one of the ways you can have a happy life, a really happy life and make money at the exact same time is by figuring out how business cycles work, figuring out issues of diminishing return, and then basically work your ass off when it is the most profitable to work your ass off, and then go to the beach when it doesn't matter. Again, I saw this with a lot of consultants. Um, like I knew some consultants, I don't know why. Um, I guess they uh, they had a lot, of, a lot of students as their client base. Again, for me, I had, I went more for businesses as my client base. Again, businesses is where you really make the money. Um, and so for me, my my real downtime, like I say, was in that weird November, January time frame, because at that point, nobody wants projects done. You're coming to the end of the, the, the end of the financial year, the fiscal year. People are taking all kinds of vacations. It's just a pain in the ass. So again, why am I going to work my ass off if there's a if you have a downtime there? Where I had other friends of mine who. Um, because most of their clients were students, just, just how it worked out. Um, their downtime was during the summer. You know, June, July, August, they just had no work, none, none. 
And so that's a thing, but they would sit there and they would still try to work their asses off. And it's like, guys, for whatever reason, I mean, we can quibble about who you decided to have as your client base later, but you decided to have students as your client base. That's already been decided. So if you've already decided to have students as your client base, why are you going to work your ass off during the summer when you just know nobody's gonna walk through the door? All right, nobody's gonna walk through the door regardless. You, you, you man that shop freaking 20 hours a day. You know, nobody else is gonna walk through the door because again, all your people are students and they're all off on, uh, on vacation or whatever. And so that's something to think about. And also this is something to think about with like how you build your business. Because again, you know, a lot of people still have this idea that they need like retail storefronts. They need offices and all that kind of thing. Do remember, if you have a retail storefront, it has to be manned, right? If you're open eight hours a day or five hours a day or 12 hours a day, that means somebody's got to sit in there 12 hours a day. You know, whether you're busy or not. Uh, one of the nice things is if you're doing more of a consultant thing, working out of your house, or, if, or at the very least, just working out of a normal office park or something, you don't necessarily have to have those hours, right? If you go to the client or if you do the work remotely, you don't have to worry about hours. So again, when things slow down, you don't have any real issues. Um, so these, these are some of the things that I would say that you should be thinking about is again, how can you work, how can you work most profitably? Um, Cause again, I feel like a lot of people have just lost the point of business and work and all of that. You know, the point of work is not to work 60 hours a week. Um, I see that with a lot of people nowadays. There's this whole idea that, you know, the more you work, the more important you are. That's a load of crap. If you're working 60 hours a week, you're an idiot. Uh, no offense to the idiots out there, but you are, right? There's no reason why you should be working 60 hours a week. If you're working 60 hours a week, it means you're functionally not doing something right. If you can't get it done in 40 hours, right? But anyways, but people have this idea, and so they want to work, 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 and especially, like I say, with consultants, they sit there, and they work, 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 even when they're not making any money. And again, what's the point of that? The entire point of business is profit. The entire point of this, um, as I always say, you know, it's not gross, it's not net, it's where you take your vacations, right? <laughs> Nobody ever thinks of that. It's like, everybody's like, well, it's, it's not gross, it's net. It's like, it's not even net. It's where you take your vacations. Like, can you actually use the money? Okay, you got all that money. What are you doing with it? I'm like, what? Because <laughs> I mean, I see that with so many people that are actually successful in business. And they just waste so much money on stupid things because they can't get away. They can't actually enjoy their life. Um, so they use it on all this crap that they don't really want to begin with. Well, that's, that's my thought for the day. It's a whole idea of front loading your business. Basically, work, work when it is most profitable, and when it's not profitable, go take a vacation. <laughs> Again, it's, it's one of those funny things. Like I see a lot of the startup people and a lot of the, uh, uh, a lot of the people starting businesses, and there's this whole idea, and they're, they're all, they always talk about it, and they're like, ah, I'm doing this for freedom. I'm doing this so I have control of my life. And then you look at your that look at their life that they create, and you're like, "What? You purposely created this? <laughs> Wait a minute! You said you wanted freedom. You wanted you said you wanted flexibility, and looks like it's pretty miserable. Honestly, looks like you're now working six. You know, instead of working eight hours a day for the man uh, and making good money, you're now making working twelve hours a day for yourself uh, and struggling by. And you can't tell me that's a good life. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, but. Oh, that's my thought. That's my thought. So uh, I'm very happy with getting the whole whole video thing front loaded. Uh, the only thing that might be a little quirky for me, though, like I say, from the main channel, is just the sponsors. <laughs> the sponsors want to pay me money. Again, it's so funny. Like, and I, I try to tell you guys this because I try to tell you guys what the real world is actually like, or at least my world. And again, I'm a fucking human being. You can look around. You know, this is the neighborhood I live in. This is pretty pretty suburban neighborhood, right? Um, and like I was talking to, um, I was talking to to one of my, my sponsors or one of the noob sponsors yesterday, and it was it was so funny. It was the second one. So I told him it was you know it's fifty dollars per episode to sponsor Eli the computer guy, uh, you know a thousand dollar minimum. And they're just like yeah whatever, like literally yeah whatever. And I'm sitting there, I'm like really, I'm like really. <laughs> and then like I'm literally talking to this person. And uh, thankfully, we're going to do a lot, lots of business together, hopefully. And he was like, he was like, what was he saying? He was like, he was talking about their marketing budget. 
And again, he was like, I, I have more, I have more marketing budget than I know what to do with. And I'm literally sitting there talking this person down from buying more stuff for me. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do some work for with them. Uh, that, that's a nice little prof, profitable venture. And then I, I think it's going to work out well. Uh, so hopefully we'll be doing a lot of stuff in the future. But like literally, this guy's just like, he's just sitting there trying to like negotiate like two or three contracts. We haven't even done the first contract. And he's trying to negotiate two or three contracts into the future. Just because he's like, oh my God, that's a great deal. Here, let, me, let me just throw more money at you. You know what? I got money. Yeah. And again, that's one of the things for you guys to realize is again, once you go out there and once you actually become valuable, once you find things that people actually want from you, it is surprising how easy it is to sell things. It really is. Like I said, I, I should have my whole sponsor roster, you know, filled up um, pretty soon. I don't know, next few weeks, I guess. And, you know, once I get that sponsor roster filled up, I mean, that's $500 per episode. And that's before the YouTube monetization comes in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it's just like because I've built something that other people would find valuable. And even at $50 per uh, per slot, they say it's really affordable. So I'm probably going to be upping it to like $100 per slot in the next you know few months. That would be nice. But again, because I sat there, I worked, I created, and now I have something, you know? And that's what I try to tell you guys. Like I say, with all this business stuff, building and making money, is, I mean, it's all, you know, this whole idea of like hacking your way to success. It's not. You just sit there, you grind. Again, because some of you guys will be like, oh, it must be nice making $50 per sponsor or whatever, $500 per episode. But again, like I said, I mean, this is something I've worked six and a half years to build. There was no hacking with this. There was no, well, maybe a little hacking with it. <laughs> um, but, um, you know, it's just something you sit there and you grind and you build and you build and you build. And then the question that you have to have is as you become successful, you can, again, if you find products that people want, you find services that people want, solutions that people want at a profit margin that gives you a nice net, that's the way to go. And it's pretty easy to do. But then the question that you have to ask, and that's the final question, uh, is basically what kind of life do you want? Are you going to be chasing every single damn dollar bill? And that is where I will say that I'm not. <laughs> I turn down a lot of offers. And the reason is, is because I don't want a life where I chase every dollar bill. Chasing dollar bills is not the point. Working, earning money, so that I can go spend a month in Florida, that is the point. Um, I had a buddy of mine who talked about that because we, we had a mutual buddy who just was like working himself into the grave. Like literally working himself into the grave. Like, it was just horrible. This boy was horrible. He, he's like, he's like a very, he's an advanced level engineer that got into an executive position. Uh, not a, not a computer engineer, another type of engineering. Um, but he, he would just never stop working. And I mean, it was a type of thing, like he was talking about looking at this house, this five story house with an elevator. He was talking about all the stuff he buys. And I was like, wow, that seems really great. Um, until you realize like how much he worked. And like literally, he was working himself into the grave. Into the grave. Like he may actually be dead at this point, right? He was just working himself so hard. And the, the funny thing my, my buddy brought up is he was like, you know, you got to know what your number is. And that's, that, that was a way, that, that's, that's one of my quotes nowadays, is, is, is what's your number? And it's something that people don't really think about. They don't ever think about is how much money do you actually want? Again, you know, I talk about like a hundred thousand or whatever. Um, and I throw that out there because it's just a reasonable amount of money. But that is the question. Like what amount of money will actually make you happy? Like if you went out there and you can make a hundred thousand dollars a year, does that make you happy? Uh, $250,000 a year. Does that make you happy? A million dollars. Again, I'm not, I'm not being moral here. I'm not being ethical. I'm not telling you what the number should be. But the problem you run into is if you don't have that number in your head, the question becomes is when do you ever stop, right? Because if you don't have a number, if your whole goal is that all you need to do is make more money, well, then guess what? You will never have enough, right? There will never be enough because your entire goal is to have more. 
So the problem is, is if you work 40 hours a week and you realize you can make more money if you work 50 hours a week, then you work 50 hours a week. And if you realize you can make more money if you work 60 hours a week, then you work 60 hours a week. And then if you realize, oh, but if I take a vacation, um, I'm going to lose out on money, then you don't take a vacation. And you just keep working and working and working and working and working. And again, at the point, you know, what's, what's the point? Again, like I say, I'm not, I'm not one of these people. That's talking about a life of poverty. I don't have a life of poverty. Screw that. <laughs> Buddhism, the middle way. And I think actually I'll talk about that in a different video. But one of the questions is, is what is the middle way in, mod in modern American society? Again, because when everybody, everybody talks about Buddhism, you know, they talk about, they always think about like poverty or whatever. And it's not poverty. It's supposed to be the middle way. And so the thing is, the middle way uh, in India a thousand years ago uh, is different than the middle way uh, in the United States in 2016. But that's its own little story. But that's a question, is like, what, what are you going for? What is the point? And do you even know what the point is? Right? I've got all my numbers in my head. And I know my numbers. And it's so funny, like when I do negotiations, when I talk with people, because it's so funny, because like, they just, they just throw money on the table. They're just like, here's money. Obviously, you will accept this offer. And then I always go back to my wife, and I laugh. And I was like, they were so shocked when I said no. <laughs> and then my wife groans. <laughs> Why did you say no? I said, because they annoyed me. I didn't want to do that. All they offered me was money. <sighs> Ridiculous. But that's the whole thing, because I know the kind of life I want. No, I was talking about that with the, the thing. And um, there was a company, and they were going to pay me a lot of money for like eight hours worth of work. Uh, they wanted to fly me out, so whatever. Um, it was a lot of money. It was like uh, north of north of a thousand dollars an hour, north of a thousand dollars an hour, um, and uh, I said no to him. And it was funny because I, I was talking to this company yesterday, doing the sponsorship, and doing all the deals and all that. And the guy was like, "Why the hell did you say no to them?" And the thing that I explained was because the deal would have been a continuing relationship. And again, this is what you have to be careful about with businesses. And so it wasn't a one-time thing. It was, yes, they pay me a lot of money for this time. And they pay me a lot of money for next time, and the next time, and the next time, and the next time. But there was going to be a next time, and 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 next time. And so for me, flying all over the goddamn world, Spaghetti Monster damned world, um, basically at the beck and the call of a company, even for ridiculous amounts of money, again, north of $1,000 per hour, um, just wasn't worth it. I was like, I looked at my life and I'm like, I don't, okay, I'm gonna get that much more money, but is that going to make my life better? If I have $10,000 more in my pocket, does that functionally, that's the thing to think about, does that functionally make your life better? And I know everybody's like, oh, $10,000, Eli. But no, but does it make your life better? And what a lot of times you'll find out is once you factor in all the other things that go around uh, actually accomplishing the, that extra profit, that it doesn't make your life better. Again, like I said, for me, health is important. Important enough. <laughs> important enough that I pretend to care. There you go. You know what I'm saying? That a geek diet redux, right? And so that's a thing. Traveling all over the world, sitting in airplanes, staying in hotels, eating crappy food, dealing with jet lag. You know, you know, that whole story I say with my, my stepfather, you know, he wants to live another, another five years uh, if you have to eat crap food, and then he keels over at 43, right? <laughs> Again, you may be thinking about, oh, well, you know, I'd give up, a, you know, a little bit of stress, extra stress, crappy food, I'd give up a few years of my life to make, you know, ten, hundred thousand dollars $100,000? Yeah, yeah, of course, you're stupid, Eli. But that's the thing, you don't get to negotiate how much of your life goes away. Right, you just know your life is shorter. If your life is shorter by a year, it's shorter by a year. Five years, five years. 45 years, eh, fuck it. <laughs> and again, that's the type of thing people don't think about. Oh, but anyways, anyways, that's me more babbling about business and all this stuff. It's just so sad. Like I say, even in the American society, in the American society, they say it's all about capitalism. I'm not really sure what the hell it's about. You talk with most people, they just don't even have a clue what's going on. They don't like, it's not even like, it's not even like the topics are complicated and they don't grasp the compl uh, how complicated it is. It's kind of like trying to explain like economics to goldfish. You're like, Eli, are you comparing us to goldfish? No, of course I'm not comparing you to goldfish. I would never compare you to a goldfish. Oh, never. As, as all my subscribers walk out the door. 
but you know that's how it goes that's how it goes you go talk with business people and i swear to you it is nowhere as, as hard as people think like i say i've been in so many different businesses where people walk in the door with checks written again like i say my, my buddy ron schmelzer who does the tech breakfast i mean i've seen it he's up to like 13 tech breakfast now he's doing all kinds of other events but, I mean, it's the lamest idea in the world. I mean, God bless. I, I, love, I love Ron. Ron's a great guy. He's an MIT graduate. He's actually created a couple of real startups. So he's done real tech work. I'm not snarking him on, on real tech work. All I'm saying is this current idea is, is, is about the lamest thing you can come up with. But people are throwing money at him, right? You know, all he does, you know, two hours, once a month, he gets people together for bagels, coffee, has three or four or five people demonstrate their new startup companies and sponsors like throw money at them. And I've seen it. I've seen the people come up like trying to stab him with dollar bills. He's like, you know, well, if you want your message out there, you just gotta pay me, you know, one year or whatever else. And they're like, okay, here's $3,000. Like, all right. That's how it works. And again, you know, you talk about, oh, but what you need to be successful. I mean, how hard is that, really? I mean, there, there is more, more, more to it um, than I can go into right here. But it's not really actually that much more to it. Again, you create an event, you market the hell out of the event, you get some bagels, you get some coffee, you get startup people in a room, and you card sponsors, 250 and above, you know, for a dozen of them to sponsor it. How fucking hard is that? But no, no, everybody's gonna tell me, no, Eli, but what, what, what you don't understand. Well, you don't, you don't understand the economy is so hard. The economy is so hard, Eli. It's like, no, you're just not doing anything anybody cares about. Here's the fact of the matter. Nobody needs another burger flipper. Nobody needs another burger flipper. We have all the burger flippers we need. We have more burger flippers than we need. And that's why they make minimum wage. We don't have nearly enough people creating tech events. We don't have normally, not nearly enough people doing technology education. We don't have nearly enough people doing actually surprisingly reasonably simple things um, that just require work. Again, as I, I will always point out, landscaping is a crap ton of money. Um, and again, the real story, real stories I'll tell you guys, and I've told this before, but you guys may not have heard it in this channel. But, you know, so I was in DECA when I was a uh, young and when I was in high school, Distributed Education Clubs of America. And um, basically it was a, it was a club, a vocational program for small business. And so we all had our own little small business ideas and we were all doing our things. And woo, I was making my little, I don't know, $500 a month I was really proud of. Uh, and then I had a buddy of mine um, who started, that I knew him when he started, he started this landscaping company. Uh, and basically when he started it, all it was was he was literally planting trees. Somehow he found out that people needed trees planted. Whatever, okay, weird thing. You know, again, how all this works. And so he went out, and he found out that people would pay like 50 bucks or whatever to plant a tree. Oh, that sounds good. So he went out, and he planted a tree and got 50 bucks for it. Uh, and then more people needed trees planted, because I guess whatever area he was in, you know, they were doing all this landscaping work. And at 50 bucks a pop, he was damn cheap, so they were happy to pay him. And so he kept doing this and doing this and doing this. And after a year, so I met him when he started doing it, and then after a year... We met at the, uh, at the main uh, DECA conference comp competition here in Maryland in Hagerstown. And I was sitting there one day and I'm talking to him. You know, we're eating. And he's all like depressed. He's all like kind of miserable. Like, oh, what happened, right? You know, I'm sitting there. I'm thinking, oh, did the girl dump him? Is he on drugs? What's going on? And he's like, oh, man, let me tell you, my business has taken off. I was like, what? And he was. He was like 17 years old. And his landscaping, landscaping, uh, he was now making $70,000 a year. 17 years old, still in high school, making 70 grand a year. And I'm like, okay, well, what, what's, what's, the, what's, what's there to be depressed? Like, holy shit, you're 17 years old making 70 grand a year. How can you possibly be sad? And then again, real world questions you guys don't think about. I remember he looked at me and he said, yeah, but Eli, what do you do when you make twice as much as your mom? <laughs> I was like, wow, that's a hell of a question. I, 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 I would like to I would I would like to think about that question from your position, but that's a hell of a question. But it really was true. Like he just started this stupid ass landscaping business, planting trees, and he, what he found out is if he planted things and then gave a warranty, people would pay a crap ton of money for it. 
he was like, yeah, you know, basically I plant the tree or whatever, and I give them a one-year warranty. If it dies within the year, I just buy a new one and plant it. And I said, oh, but, but isn't that warranty, you know, what happens if it dies during the year? And he's like, dude, it's like one out of 50 of these plants die in a year. They don't die. It doesn't really matter. Um, and so you just, right? And again, that was landscaping. The reason is he was willing to go out. He was willing to work. He was willing to do what people actually needed done. He needed to solve problems. And he was willing to do it uh, in something where the profit margin was high enough so that he could make twice as much as his mom. Can you imagine that being 17 years old and sitting there thinking about that? Because again, it was in the 90s. So $70,000 was more than it is now. $70,000 was more akin to like $90,000 a year now. All right, that's real. He's out there working, doing the deal. Oh, but anyways, anyways, with that, I have no idea when this video will end, so I should probably shut it off now. So last time, um, the battery did not die. So when I was doing the video last time, the battery didn't die. It just, for whatever reason, it simply just stopped at like 46.25. So we're at like 40.37 right now. So I will, I will cut it off before it forces me off. So with that, it has been a good day. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna exercise tomorrow. Uh, have my wife drag me out and ass crack a dawn and hopefully start getting some muscles going on. Get some muscles going on. So with that, I'll talk to you guys later. Oops, stop. <laughs>